the scriptures sound. All I ever wanted was a life in my mountain, free from you and your so-called merits. Those high above don't trust me. I understand that. And they send you and those knuckleheads to threaten me. To obey and serve once more. <laughs> I understand that too. But what I don't understand is... You bastards killing my... Not just any monkey. He's a monkey of merit. A monkey was made Buddha once. None other than me can challenge him to a duel. Look, monkey. I don't make a habit of fighting someone I've bested before. Here's my offer. If you lose, I'll take you to the Celestial Court. They will stay and level your mountain. But if I lose, I shall certainly take revenge, and they will level your mountain nonetheless. Hmm. How tragic would that be, huh? You are one of the court. We don't need to resort to violence. How about you bend the knees, admit the wrongs, and we can put this behind us? <laughs> All these years, except for that pig, you're the one who talks the tallest tales. Good, I am entertained. Speaking of entertainment, wouldn't it be fun if I pluck your extra eye out for my snack and allow you to keep the other two? Because I'd hate to let you miss how I'll slaughter each mongrel of the court. Those below, those above, and that black mutt of yours. Come at me, all of you. Victorious fighting Buddha. Have you any idea how many would give their everything for immortality? Immortality? <laughs> for that word, all realms and beings have ruined themselves. The Celestial Court welcomed you, foul monkey, yet you remain untamed. None shall save you now. <laughs> Dear brother, your edge needs homing. Good. I was in need of a back scratcher. <laughs>
Sound Monkey! Taste my axe! You call that a deal? The glare up here is dazzling. Fight me in the woods if you have the guts. Yeah. And so ends the last tale of Sun Wukong. A hero who treasured his freedom above all else. Buddhahood he attained, yes, but cumbersome he found the celestial rules, for he yearned to come back and to revel in the simple joys with us. Little did he know, his choice to forgo the life above only fueled their mistrust. <sighs> this stone has stood for countless days on the mountain. Since my youth, they've said that his remains lie within it. <laughs> Unbegotten, undying, such is the nature of a stone monkey. Though his body was broken, his spirit endures. Into six relics he turned, and separately they escaped, choosing to stay hidden. Those are the six senses of the great sage. Yet no one has ever seen them, not in centuries. I'm old now. Venture through all the lands, I cannot. Yet among you, there might be one who is destined. One that shall recover all his scattered relics. And upon the return of the relics to Mount Tuaguo, he may yet rise again. I, the Keeper of Black Wind Mountain, have long been waiting for your arrival. Oh, 
a spitting image, I'd say. Up ahead is Guan Yin Temple. Once it was bustling with worshippers before it was ruined by that fire. Ah. Then the temple was rebuilt. Oh, what good is it to rebuild a temple if the goodwill of men has been burnt to ashes? You've forgotten this place, but they haven't forgotten you. Oh, that's a tough one. Good luck to you. We have company. It's been a while, but the immobilized spell still works like a charm. <laughs> Since you hail from Mount Huaguo, it won't hurt to teach you a handy trick. Now, here we go. Give me your hand. There you go. Should you come across any miscreants, just point your finger at them and release this spell. You'll be able to hold them in place while giving yourself a breather. Sadly, mine is but a humble trick. Its power will wear off within a few short moments. Though it's good enough against boneheads like this one. Anyway. Just consider it an ace up your sleeve. No! The young boys these days know no manners! Fear not! Teach them a lesson with your new spell!
Thank Mitaba! Oh, oh, finally then, the three bells sang! Disciples come, I hear travelers approaching my temple carrying new treasures! <laughs> I cannot see you, but I recognize your odor. It cannot be you. You are back? It must be you who took that Kasaya. Now give it back!
five hundred years. I have rebuilt the temple. Now it's grander in scope. All those monks consumed by the fire turn to wandering ghosts roaming in Black Wind Mountain. It was I who granted them eternal repose. I have even restored the charred scriptures piece by piece. <laughs> but oh yes, I always knew. One day you shall return. Some cheap tricks! Meet me at the summit if you dare! <laughs> the spell he just cast may appear intricate, but it's not hard to learn. But Black Bear's expertise is lacking. Serving Guan Yin didn't help him much. But what he left here could surely help us. Consider today your lucky day. <laughs> Sight out of mind is a fool's task. Seeing but seeing through is what wise men do. But didn't he turn mad by what he saw too? <laughs>
luxury life for today! Fortune is no longer on your side! No one will come to your aid. All I need is to take it elsewhere and rebuild everything on you! <laughs> Celestial Court, if given a choice, who dared to challenge the mighty wrecker of the Celestial Palace? His words ring true. No matter how daring he was, he had not the nerve to harm the great sage. There must be someone else pulling all the strings. Exactly, and this thing is eerie. I have no idea how to make use of its power, except to enshrine it up there, tricking lesser Yaogwais into offerings. If you pardon me, I'll go back to Guanyin to atone for my actions and be put back on the engaging band. You will never see me out there anymore! I know his nonsense. Go now, little monkey. Go and retrieve the great sage's relic.
Master, it still puzzles me. A monk's lust for gold should be quelled. Why does Elder Jinshe still cling to that one Kasaya? Hmm. Bereft of that Kasaya, how shall they show the world their ties are cut and their lust is quelled? Across streams, over hills, and through the black wind your blood has spilled. Wolves howl, snakes wind, flames lick, and the smoke blinds. Stumble on the lesser, lame, crash before their betters, shame. With such clumsiness, what destiny do you claim? As the small fish catches its prey, the bigger lurks behind. Who is the bigger fish? I can't see it. As for the prey and the small fish, <laughs> they are swimming everywhere. In his last life, the monk was Jin Chanzu, the second disciple to Buddha in the West. Yet his arrogance led him to disregard the Dharma teachings, and as a result, the Buddha cast him down to the mortal realm. He was destined to face 81 trials throughout his journey. The fire for that Kasaya was merely the eleventh. A fine guardian for Guan Yin he could have been, yet he came back here to daydream immortality. Sadly, he had the greed, but lacked the pluck. He could fool his followers, but not himself. His destiny was sealed the moment he donned that band. A mere human, blessed with a lifespan nearing three centuries, yet he was never sated. He just had to seize that one Kasaya. Centuries of devotion undone by a moment's greed. In the end, a lost soul became him. How pathetic. <laughs> 